On the morning of April 9th, the last of Freya volcano explosively erupted. A huge plume of ash shot into the sky and plunged St. Vincent into darkness. You know, you know, like on a jet just pass, it's starting off that way. And then it starts expanding. And while it's expanding, climbing, it goes higher. So the winds, the water and the wind scream and the, the, the ash stick on. Stick on the wind scream and you wipe it and wipe it. And it's all at the door. And we couldn't come outside. Okay? It was terrible. Any time I did in my life on God help me, I live to see and I hate anything about suffering going to Europe. I am not staying once I am in that village. The hardest hit communities were those closest to the volcano. Georgetown, Orange Hill, Sandy Bay, Iowa, and Fancy. Michael Hoyt and his neighbor Thomas Sutherland, residents of Sandy Bay, stayed during the explosive eruptions. They recount their experience. We reach Georgetown. The place started to shake, the Georgetown started to shake, and the, the thunder and the smoke start bubbling and yeah, coming over. I put on the light, put on the light, and can't see the light. Oy. So come like I can't see where I go. Yes. And that was about 7, 8 o'clock. I can't see where I go. So uh, it was three of us in the vehicle. And first say, uh, Haiti, we can't go. We can't, we, I was determined to come and let go the animals there. I play nine here in them. Here. So I keep on driving, keep on driving. I'm putting out my head out there the, because I can't see anything. So I, I know the road. So I feel into the road. Uh, uh, so. When I reach by Rabukade, you know, well, I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing, and the, the, the amount of dust and ashes are falling. The vehicle starts to steal, and it's it, like it will take the wheel out of my hand. So if I say that, I if you're going, leave me. If you want to go, you go going, but mm. leave me. So I decide to turn back now. Turn back. <laughs> All right, that was about 19. I said, well, I go make an extra. I, when when it's in school, uh, we reach down about one o'clock by the camp. Down there is all right. About one o'clock time I tell them first, let's go again. One of them say, Corporal said, boy, me not going up there. You could go on if you want. Me said, boy, maybe we have to go and let go the animals there. So I jump in the deep and hey, hey, I train winds, water and the wind scream and the, the, the ash stick on. Stick on and the wind scream and the wiper can't wipe it. As a matter of fact, it stick the wiper. Yeah, yeah. And I decide to come here. But when I reach Sabana Gota, that is behind Orange Hill, the, the kind of thing soft and the rock that start to drop on the vehicle, I feel the windscreen will have a break up. From my no notice what is taking place, I wasn't scared. Certainly God, I just did, believing where there's a God, and he said he will never forsake us, and he will never leave us. So I accustomed praying, and it, it never come to me as if like I should move, so I just stand there and watch everything happen. On the Friday evening it start, from about 20 to 4 around that time, sprinkling some light ash, then it move on to a little faster pace to the ash. It come till it starts bringing small pebbles, small stones, right, like we used to gravel, we call that, right, start coming with that. So after that start coming now, everybody start getting serious and know, well, okay, well, this thing is going to erupt. Because it's getting great signs and it answering to you like thunder in the sky. Eh? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I stand right here and watching it there, you see the smoke bubbling going up and it falling and it climbing. While it, it falling, it climbing and real fast. So you will know well, it is it, it, it in action there, real serious. And then you will hear like a thunder. But it's not really not thunder, it's the operation of the software. Um, bouncing off of the cloud like if you are. Um, call out and to somebody and there's a rock there you will hear a back song something mm -hmm. like that yeah when the stuff will make it noisy it back song from the cloud and you get it like if it's thunder now it start operating there a lightning flash and go that way and then the, the, the song start coming from that side now then two fellas sit down there when one lightning flash and he flash so hard he must shift and if something was coming at him eh? so we laugh because I say what are you fighting for you jumping so <laughs> <laughs> my goodness let the night and the real action you know Real action, my brother. I tell you. So we there, thunder after thunder. Now we 
he reached to a time now like every time a draft come in it taking about two hours to before it can cool off a little while and when it cool off for like a half an hour or even three quarter it come back again a thunder and then you start to get in ash right to right to right to non-stop until the next day about 12 o'clock it looking like they clean because everywhere was still dark and we have no light so now it is darkness right through right through right through until about 12 o'clock that's a saturday morning that happens now from there now you start seeing like um and now and again vibration and every time you go in and do, do something you see it climbing there now when we get the evacuation notice i didn't move the same time all right i decided to move the morning because of certain circumstances however um soon as the ash went up in the air my father called me and then that's just basically it yeah i didn't really way too late to move so i didn't really get to experience as much as other persons who would have stayed back in the area but it hasn't been damaged it's um still standing and that was the only thing i was actually you know um hoping that nothing ain't wrong with the house or you know call a lot of people is not gonna come back to a home possibly because person's house will drop in and you know from Barbados which is flat <laughs> so um, I don't think you you know how to be prepared for an active volcano and living here um, I thought it just goes off once and then it settles down and then after the second one I was like okay this is serious you know you see the ash coming in and the chaos then ensued like people evacuating you so much uncertainty then water shortages it was just so crazy and so surreal and it's just been a very emotional journey because like I, I would go into the shelter sometimes and you see just how things are there and people need stuff you know like supplies come in and they go out so quickly um, so we, we this is this is the start of a very long journey to, to recovering and I mean we just who knows this thing is so unpredictable you know who knows how long this can go on for some families in the red zone had to move to various evacuation shelters. At Lowman's Leeward Allington School, a shelter in the south of the island, Phil Boat reflected on how his family had to be rescued during the eruptions. When I saw the smoke was going up, the first time it is my first experience, it was like confusing, seeing that a pile of smoke going over me. I was wondering what is going to happen. Then. After we jumped on a vehicle, head to Sandy Bay, we could not get no further because there was too much stone on the road and the truck began to slide, so we decided we are going to turn back. We go back home. The evening, the police then give the truck driver an order to carry out some animal, and we decided we are going to try to carry them out. When we reach in the Ashton, when we look back up, the volcano blow out again, and my mother was home. At any cost, I have to get back home and meet my mother. So, in the night, we was at back up, we were heading back up and the place was really dark. Ash was falling on the truck. But we decided we were not gonna stop. When we get home, when we jump off the truck, we didn't even realize that the ash fall was so much on the ground already. So when we get down on the ground now, we was asking each other, what are we going to do? Are we going to get back out now? So we come to a consideration, boy, it is, it will be difficult for the truck to leave, so we are gonna stay for the night. When we was there now, in the home, I was advising my family to be calm, relax. Though in my mind I was still panicking. I asked them to take a little rest and I was still. After two, I realized like everything was getting calm. Around four o'clock I decided to take some sleep and by the time I closed my eyes, I could hear the chuck on blowing again. His mother is grateful to be alive. The time we went in, it was water ashing, 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 ashing until the morning. The morning the truck was blowing the last hand. And when I heard the hand, my husband said, like, the owner put the truck calling down there. And when I look out, the car still no way. It was like dark all after nine minutes to ten, it was still dark. He say, they said that the coast guard is coming and we have to get down by the beach, by the wall. Well, we try our best and we get down by the wall. The coast guard come and they take the people them and take us in town. 
bring us the people and take us to this campaign. And I am right, right now, I am really feeling proud that I feel a little bit happier right now where I am. Because God knows, I want to say, thank God for the first experience in my life about suffering. Anytime I did in my life and God help me and I live to say and I hear anything about suffering going to Europe. I am not staying once I am in that village. I am trying to move. And even right now that the government could able to build some way good for myself and my little family. I will even feel better even though they want me to move and they want to put me in some way that I know that I feel happy.